Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I have an unusual gear review for you. This is the, my review of the Fujifilm XF10, which has become my everyday carry camera. Now, I didn't think when I bought this I'd ever do any sort of review or anything of it, um, but when I look back at the statistics in my Lightroom catalogue, over the last year or so, I've had this for about 18 months to two years, um, this has been my most used camera. It's a small, pocketable, APS-C size camera um, with a 28mm equivalent full-frame lens, which shows 18.5mm. It is fixed focal range. It doesn't zoom. Um, it has two killer features which make it my everyday carry camera. So I bought this camera because I'm a father of two small children. I like to document their lives. I like to record the things that we do together, but I don't always have space or the energy to carry all of the things that every parent will tell you you have to take when you go anywhere with two small children, as well as a camera bag and lenses. I was looking at buying the Ricoh GR3. Um, being a Pentax shooter, it seemed the obvious choice for a pocketable camera. I'm a bit of an image quality snob, so I was focused on getting the biggest sensor I could in the smallest body I could. Um, I started out with one key requirement, and both those cameras met that requirement that I could put the camera in the pocket of my jeans. Simple as that, front pocket of my jeans. That was the main requirement that I had when working out which camera to buy. I don't shoot in my day-to-day -day photography anywhere near as wide as this camera shoots. Nowhere near as wide. So that helps to change my photography a little bit. Now, when it comes to this camera, you'll find there's a lot of reviews online in which it comes under quite heavy criticism for its autofocus ability. I came from shooting Pentax um, DSLRs, which if you've seen my Pentax versus Sony um, video, you will know that this is, that Pentax DSLRs, their weak spot is their autofocus. So coming from that background, the autofocus on this camera was more than acceptable. It also has the snap to focus feature, similar to the Ricoh GR cameras. Most of you photographers will be familiar with this idea. You simply set the camera for a certain distance and it'll make sure everything in that distance is in focus. Um, so by setting this appropriate aperture. Um, they call it snap to focus, I think, in recall speak, and it's called something very similar within this camera. The big difference when I bought this camera and the Ricoh GR was two things. The GR3 had just been released. Both cameras were 24 megapixels, very similar specifications. This one was £400, the Ricoh was £800. So at that time I was looking for a camera that was going to go in my pocket. I wasn't sure how often I'd use it. Well, I do some street photography. Um, street photography is not my core thing. Um, just something I do occasionally. I didn't feel I could justify the cost of the Ricoh. Lots of reviews will tell you the Ricoh is a better camera, but does that mean that's the right camera for you? Not necessarily. And I think it wasn't the right camera for me, and I've been perfectly happy with the Fuji. Um, it feels perfectly fine in the hand, fits nicely in the pocket, and has one killer feature that makes this an ideal everyday carry camera. Now, if you're like me, when you're out with your kids, you take a lot of photos. Some of them good, some of them bad. But if you're also a photographer who taking photographs to earn a living as well, you probably don't want to spend a massive amount of time processing and editing your own personal day-to-day -day photographs. And that's a conversation I've had with a lot of photographers, and it's a reason why a lot of photographers choose to use their mobile phones. Now, one of the things about Fuji cameras, which most people will tell you, is they have a lot of um, film profiles built into the camera. Um, and this, that's the same for this particular camera. So the film profiles that we have on this camera are, so we have Provia, that's, that's the standard. Um, we have Velvia, which is a vivid. Um, Astia, which is a soft film stock. Um, classic Chrome, which is very popular with people. Um, Proneg High, which is actually my personal favorite for, for portraiture. Um, Proneg Standard, Monochrome, Monochrome with a yellow filter, Monochrome with a red filter, Monochrome with a green filter and sepia so there are a few film profiles in there so you can set a look that you want for your family pictures within the camera and not feel the need to shoot raw possibly depends on how much of a control freak you are but this camera has one little feature that i didn't know about when i bought it which i think makes a huge difference in the drive mode where you would normally be able to set, set bracketing which you have one exposed correctly one under exposed one overexposed instead you can set 
um, bracketed film exposures. So you can choose three film exposures, um, film stocks that you're happy with, and it will take three JPEGs for you. Now, the only stack with that is you have to click the button three times. It won't do it by just holding down the button, which is a bit of a flaw in my opinion. Um, it should do it like normal bracketing where you just hold the button down and all three will go. But for me, that has helped me to get away from my need to process everything. So I have it set up to take the first picture with ProNeg High, which I tend to be photographing people and I particularly like that. Um, the second program with um, Provia, which is their standard profile, and the third with Monochrome. So that when it comes to selecting my shots in Lightroom later, I do simply have three photos that I generally like the uh, look of, um, as far as processing is concerned, and all I need to do is maybe a little bit of retouching if I feel the need. And that's why I still think that even though the price has started to come down, it may not have the best autofocus, but it definitely has the best form factor, um, that this is still an outstanding buy. And I would recommend it to anybody. And I do think it stands up against the GR. So what do you think? Do you own the XF10? Did you choose to buy a GR over it? Um, be interested in your feedback and your comments. Um, but I've thought about selling this camera several times, um, but when I look at my stats and realize how much I use it, that's not gonna happen. Um, I'm very happy with this camera. Thanks for your time, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.